In the past 18 months, I became everything I ever wanted to be. I became fitter, I lived in a better place, I made more money, I traveled a lot more to so many places that I could not even imagine, such as spending 10 days in Norway, and I did a thousand tasks in alignment with the goals that I wanted to achieve and achieved all of them. Ultimately, I became the happiest person that I thought I could be. But to do that, I only did one thing, and one thing only, and in this video, I'm gonna be telling you what that is. So let's go right in. Let's talk about happiness. The more you follow happiness, the harder it is going to be to actually achieve it. In my opinion, happiness is not a point you reach. Happiness is just a feeling that you get in the moment when you're living in the moment and making decisions that you are truly aligned with. Happiness and fulfillment almost always, in my case, comes from struggling through difficult times. And it almost always comes when I exceed my own expectation in a challenging task, in something that I thought I would not be successful in. Happiness is different to highs or just feeling good about yourself. There are times that I go to a party and I might enjoy myself and I have a really good time. That to me is not sustained consistent happiness. True happiness is when I am literally sitting in my house doing nothing but I am content and filled with euphoria and good vibes all around. Contrary to the advice out there, feeling consistently positive emotions, i.e. being happy, does not come from success. It does not come from following and achieving all the goals that you want in your life. Rather, what you should do is to choose problems and challenges that you truly care about, suffer through them, exceed your expectations and become successful at them, and then happiness becomes as a byproduct. You are your happiest when you push yourself outside of your comfort zone and exceed your own expectations. For example, you're happiest when you break your personal record under the squat machine while you suffered for months in advance and killed yourself to get and break that PR. And there's a damn good reason for that. Your conscious brain has two jobs to imagine stuff and solve problems. And when you imagine stuff, you're actually predicting the outcomes of that situation. You're prejudging the outcomes or the consequences of a situation without you even realizing it. This from an evolutionary standpoint absolutely makes sense. You predict dangers, you predict what is going to happen in a situation with your imagination, and then you go and actually gauge as to what the situation actually is. But the problem is, we don't need to constantly imagine how our lives are going to be, especially now in the 21st century when we don't have lions running after us. But what happens is that we do still imagine absolutely everything. It's out of our control. So when the imagination is not as good as the reality is, we become unhappy because we don't meet our expectation. And the vice versa is also true. When the reality exceeds your expectation or what you imagined about the situation, then you become happier. It's a nice surprise. It's new information that you did not expect. And novelty and new information is literally what our brains like because it produces dopamine for us, because it is a good feeling. And for me, the right ingredients for a happy life is always when you can exceed your own expectations or the situation exceeds your expectations. Then you can say happiness is an unexpected moment in time solving problems that you did not think that you can solve. And I think that is where personal growth comes from. Therefore, core happiness is the positive emotions you feel when you take the decision to take on challenges in your life that truly matter to you. Simplifying it, solving problems that you care about, solving problems that really align with who you authentically are. But here's the catch. You might argue, if I reduce my expectations, then can I always be happy? That is 100% true in my opinion. Yes, you can become a monk, have zero expectations from life, just be able to stay somewhere and you will be happy. In fact, I think monks are some of the happiest people on earth. But the question is now, what happens to my passion? What happens to my ambitions? What happens to all the goals that I want to achieve for myself? And this, in my opinion, is the subtlety of happiness. Look, we said happiness is a feeling and feelings don't last. You might feel happy for five minutes, but then it goes away. 
To have consistent happiness over time, you need to be consistently solving problems that truly matter to you. And this is extremely important. So you need to consistently choose challenging problems to tackle and solve over time. Otherwise, it's just not going to be enough. But guess what? You're truly only free to do that when you choose to go after those problems. And to be able to do that, you need to first accept the fact that you're good enough right now. And the reason for that is if you don't feel like you're good enough right now, if you're constantly comparing yourself to everyone else and are not happy with the baseline of your life, and if you don't feel like as it is right now, your life is not the best version that it could be, then you will never, in my opinion, even reach core happiness. Yes, we all have failures, shortcomings, and insecurities in our life. But we have to learn to become happy despite that. The thing is, even if you try, you will not be able to solve all these insecurities. You might be able to deal with them. You might be able to acknowledge them. You might be able to build self-awareness about them, but you will not solve them. They will never go away. And this is counterintuitive because if you have flaws and insecurities, then that by definition might mean that you are not good enough. The thing is, if you feel like you're not good enough as you are, then you probably never will be. And this is independent of how much success you're going to have or how many of your goals and aspirations and dreams are you going to achieve. Your shortcomings, insecurities, and failures will always be there. So you have to learn to accept that you are good enough. And notice that I say learn because this is a skill and it does not happen in one video or in one night. And often we hear that you should focus on the journey and not the destination. And that's true. But only when you accept that you're good enough, then you can actually focus on the journey. Otherwise, if you feel like you're not good enough, you're constantly going to compare yourself up to some level and you're constantly going to go after achieving those goals because you think that goals are going to make you feel better. I think they call this the Olympic gold medalist syndrome or something when people kill themselves for years going after the goal of getting a gold medal and as soon as they get it after five minutes when the high and the emotion goes away they get depressed because they didn't actually go after true core happiness you need to first accept that you're content with your life you need to accept what you have is good enough so that you can feel that you can become whatever you want then go out there choose these challenges struggle through them and actually get what you're after so the bottom line is i'm not saying stay home lower your expectations and pretend that everything is fine you're happy and content with your life what i am saying is that you should be aware of your circumstances and be content with your life before you can go out there and go after your happiness and your ambitions and goals you need to make happiness a choice a choice that you choose not a thing that just pops up in the middle of nowhere or highs that don't last only when you accept this fundamental level that you are good enough and that you can choose to solve problems that you like to solve that you like to deal with things that are inside of your control rather than things that are outside of your control and when you realize your happiness is only tied to the things that you want it to be tied to and your interpretation and your perspective of the situations really matter then you can truly actually become happy and go after building your own core happiness so if you want to build core happiness here's the three things that you need to do one accept that you're good enough as you are as your life is and it is probably the best that it could be except that all the decisions you made until now were good decisions and landed you where you are right now and you shouldn't have any regrets and then choose problems that truly matter to you and align with who you really are so if you agree to whatever i said so far you should accept that happiness comes from challenging times, from solving problems that you choose to solve, things that are in your internal locus of control. But choosing these problems and what to solve is actually super important. So you might ask yourself, Ali, how do I know what problems to choose? Ali, how do I get better at dealing with problems that I only want to deal with? You only need one thing, and that is defining your personal values. And that has been the biggest realization in my 20s. That has been the biggest lesson I've ever learned so far in my 26 years on earth. That my values, the whys behind my actions, 
are extremely important. And for me to have any self-development, I need to first build self-awareness and to be able to build self-awareness, the only thing I need or one of the most important things I need is to define my values, is to understand the why behind my actions or even dig deeper and understand the why of the why. Why do I think that value is true? And that is why for the rest of this mini series, I'm gonna show you a practical implementation of how you can actually define your values. I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide on how you can implement this for yourself. Take it as a guide of how you can define your values. And I will even tell you guys my lessons learned in the past year and a half that I've been dabbling with this. We will talk about discipline, motivation, and setting goals. We will talk about value prioritization, and we will even talk about how to measure your values and how to stick to them. So value metrics. I genuinely think this is the biggest thing that can change your life. I genuinely, truly believe that if you do this one thing, that if you define your values and live in alignment with them, that you are going to become the happiest version of you. You're going to achieve all the goals that you've set out to achieve. Because in my opinion, this is the most fundamental layer. You cannot build a building from the fifth story up. You have to first put the foundation in. And this is exactly the foundation fundamental knowledge that you need. So if you actually build your skyscraper based on a strong fundamental foundation, which is your values, then I think along the way you can easily change your plan to achieve different goals. But if you don't have this layer first, then even if you become successful, you will still not really get core happiness. This mini series is a three part mini series and it will include three videos. One, why values are important. Two, how do we actually implement values for ourselves? And three, my lessons learned about values. So that's about it about this video. If you want to watch part two, click right here if I've already uploaded it. If not, I'll put a link somewhere down in the description or here, whatever, so you can actually watch it. And in the next video, we're going to look at a practical application on how you can define your own values. I am going to help you define your values so that by the end of this mini series, hopefully you are a lot more self-aware and you're on the path of becoming who you truly want to be.